What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Today, we have another highly detailed breakdown and review of the hit TV show 60 Days In. The clip we're going to be speaking on today is something that inmates can't stand. Shakedown. You know, anybody that doesn't know what a shakedown is, it's when correctional officers try to get the element of surprise on inmates, usually in the middle of the night, around three in the morning, come into the cell block with all their riot gear, tell everybody to get on the ground. Then they'll take every inmate, strip search them while they're searching their cells. But like I said, they try to get the element of surprise because they don't want inmates flushing stuff down the toilet. Usually they'll turn the water off during these events so that they can't do that. That's a tall tale sign, you know, and a lot of inmates, that's how they catch wind. They'll wake up in the middle of the night and see that the water ain't running. They know what time it is. Shakedown's about to come. That person, if he's in the mix, he's going to scream out to the whole pod, water's off. Get ready. But let's get right into the clip and keep in mind, I've been through many, many shakedowns. So if there's anything that looks off to me, I'm going to speak my mind. Thumbs up, nerd. All right, so as you can see, they're lined up, what they call stack formation. And the reason why I'm stopping it right here is because I believe it was in Arizona, I just did a story where the inmates mimicked their moves. The COs were coming in stacked up, and when they came in, the inmates were stacked up as well. They used a metal bunk bed frame to block an entrance. When officers busted in and lined up in a formation, the inmates mimicked them with their own oh. formation. So, you know, inmates watch COs just like the COs watch them. And they try to learn and adapt and try new tricks of the trade. And obviously, the stack technique has been proven to be efficient. So they're all unaware. So from what I've experienced during shakedowns, it's pretty much exactly like this. They come in screaming, telling you to get on the ground, and the ones that don't get on the ground, they're doing something a little extra. The COs are gonna think immediately that you're trying to hide something. You know, anybody that has contraband in their cell, uh, you know, if, if they got the element of surprise off, they don't want to get caught with whatever they got. So everybody's hitting the dirt except for those guys. They're usually trying to run to the toilet, flush something. But like I said in the beginning, normally they turn the water off. So for all those cats out there that ain't got no contraband and nothing to worry about, then go ahead and hit the dirt nice and quick, follow the protocol, and prepare yourself because you're about to get strip searched. That's typically the next step. You know, they'll usually do it right there in the cell or they'll separate y'all. It's really up to the facility and what kind of room they have to work with. But some guys out there might be watching this worried. Are you going to have to get naked in front of a bunch of other guys? Chances are yes, unfortunately. But there are the rare times where they do it one by one. Keep your head down. Keep your head down because they don't want you seeing what they're doing. Close your mouth. We've got one more. We hit our target inmates. They were moved from the section promptly including Roby, is a well-known pod boss. We're gonna transport them to another facility. So you heard what he said, they pulled aside the targeted inmates and they're gonna be transferred to another facility, which is pretty major for jail. That stuff typically happens more along the lines in prison. But if you are a part of some kind of organization or someone that calls a lot of shots within the jail, A, I'm sure they have some kind of regional jail or something around there to put you in. But a lot of people think that in jail, there's no snitch and I tell you all the time, there's plenty of them. These guys could have been targeted by some snitches, seeing them do some activities, and then gave the word to the COs. Or the COs themselves could have just been watching, doing their own investigations, put two and two together, and said, hey, we got to get them up out of here. You never know who's watching in lockup. Gentlemen, do I have any injuries? No. We're going to tap you on your back. Come up slowly. Move towards the door. Stop. Over here. Quickly, let's go. He got scared as hell, didn't he? He's one of the participants of the show where uh, they go undercover acting like an inmate, but really they're just trying to help the staff find uh, contraband and stuff. But look, man, he got scared as hell when you tapped him on the back. Quickly, let's go. Caught wind that there's a cell phone in cell one. We've received information that they're actually taking the light apart and hiding the cell phone inside the light. 
and you see how the guy's using a drill to open up these lights because they're not that damn easy to open up. Some jails that are ancient and old and need to be torn down, yeah, you could probably open it up with a Phillips head. Shit, paper clips, something like that. But these new jails and new prisons, they come with these, uh, I don't even know the name of the uh, screws that they put in it, like star screws or something like that. So inmates got to make their own kind of wrench to open them up, but that's typically very easy to do. All you need is a big pin or some kind of plastic, burn it down until it gets really soft and then push it right into the grooves of the screw. You let the plastic cool down, you pop it off and boom, you got a perfect little plastered shape of the screw and you can use it unless it's really, really tight. Chances are you'll be able to use it and pop that light off. And the funny thing about it, now I'm looking back at it, when I made the video explaining it, I actually took off one of the screws in my bathroom so I could show y'all that it worked. That reminds me, I gotta go pick up Bobby. We gotta wrap this puppy up. He's coming home from jail today. He decided to go ahead and sign his little PR bond. Looks like they found ourselves a little shank. Ice pick. It's typical. What do you find, bro? I shank it, Even got the wrist loop so you don't lose it. Many people like to leave this little loop at the end of their shank so they can slide their hand through it in case they get into some kind of fight. They get thrown to the ground. The shank doesn't leave their hand. We're going to take every single light down and check it. We'll make sure we'll do it right here. And that is something that a lot of correctional officers don't do. And they're not trying to do. Believe it or not, I've been in establishments where you could tell that these guys ain't trying to do these damn shakedowns. One time, they did these shakedowns, and as soon as they let everybody off the lockdown for the shakedown, a couple people OD'd from drugs. So what they do, they locked it right back down. Did a whole nother shakedown. You could tell even the damn COs. They're like, man, I ain't going to, you ain't going to be able to catch it all, warden. They definitely ain't trying to unscrew every single freaking light. So far we found uh, a little bit of a powder substance, don't know what it is yet. And then of course the most serious thing was that shank I sent you a picture of. It's pretty disturbing. I've never seen anything like that in my career here, ever. But I'm glad we got it. Hopefully you enjoyed, but before you leave, let me serenade you with a personal shakedown story. I've told it in the past, but I think it's pretty hilarious. Time for a refresh. One time I was getting shaken down and they uh, got to the point where they had to pat me down. Uh, get me to take off my socks because, you know, inmates like to hide stuff in their socks. And me, at the time, was hiding some nude pictures. Very distinguishedly distinguished nude pictures. And when them shits popped out, they're like, oh, I got some flicks, huh? You got me red-handed, man. Anyways, man, I went back to the cell. They took the pictures, but they called me out. So I went back down to the booth to see what the hell they were talking about. They gave me the pictures back. Couldn't believe it. I was ecstatic. Went straight back to my cell and started relaxing immediately.